Okay, so if we want to actually increase the amount of money that people spend, we have to be careful to consider the fact that they don't spend 100% of the money. Now, there are a couple of important economic concepts involved here. You're going to see these in multiple choice questions. Okay. You have the marginal propensity, a couple big words here, to consume, and the marginal propensity to save. Okay. All right. So if we take this one piece at a time, the word marginal refers to an incremental or a per unit change. So for the next dollar that you get, how much of it are you likely to keep in your pocket versus how much of it are you likely to go spend? So marginal means incremental or per unit. Propensity is your likelihood to do something. My cameraman, for example, has a propensity to comment. No, I don't. Yeah, okay. All right, so we're talking about your per unit likelihood with the next dollar that you will spend it or save it. Now, because you can only have 100% of the next dollar that you get, your marginal propensity to consume plus your marginal propensity to save cannot equal more than 100% of that dollar. Okay, one being 100%. Now, for your average consumer, if we're looking at this in terms of what is likely to happen, a marginal propensity to consume of about 0.8 or 80% is pretty typical. That's a number that I've seen on lots of multiple choice questions. It happens. And a marginal propensity to save a 0.2 would give you a combination of one. What does that mean? It means that for the next dollar that the average consumer gets, they're going to spend 80 cents and keep 20. So let's say, for example, that the government wants to increase consumer spending and they cut taxes. Is the amount of the tax cut going to equal the amount of money that people spend? The answer is no, but it's going to get more complicated. Because this is the first issue, that people do not generally spend 100% of the money that they get. If you're talking about a tax cut, the other issue is that if people perceive the tax cut as temporary, then they tend to spend even less of it. If they think it's a one-shot deal, they tend to save more than they otherwise would if they think it's permanent, because they think, oh wait, I better hoard this money because I'm not going to get it next year. So that gets even more complicated, and it's thrown off some presidents before who were trying to enact policy that actually would have made a big difference. So savings is a leakage because money is draining out of that spending stream. We want to know how much people are going to spend. Now, the other way that MPC and MPS are used is to calculate the multiplier. And this is another term that's going to keep coming back, so you need to make sure that you are familiar with it. Multiplier is very important. Now, how does that work? Let's say, for example, that I get $5. And I go out and I spend 80% of it. And then the person I give it to spends 80% of it. And so on and so on and so on until we get down to a point where there's nothing left. If the government has a million dollar tax cut, how much money in terms of total spending after everybody who gets a piece of that spends 80% of it, does that actually turn into? There's a formula for this. It's nice and easy, but you just got to remember which number to put where. The multiplier. 1 over the MPS. And because both of these two together equal 1, it's exactly the same thing to say 1 over 1 minus the MPC. 
Using the numbers that we have here, that would give us a multiplier of 1 over 0.2 or 5. If the government passes a million dollar tax cut, it's going to turn into $5 million worth of spending. That's a big jump. So even with people not spending 100% of all of that money, because they spend it and it keeps getting respent because velocity of money keeps moving. Remember, velocity technically means the number of times the average dollar is spent over the course of a year. Money keeps moving, it keeps being respent until it's spent down to nothing. The multiplier is going to jump up that spending increase beyond the initial injection. Okay? A leakage takes money out of the spending stream. An injection puts it in, and that's a big difference if you're trying to enact policy. 